uh, APCA 2020 in Pattaya, Thailand. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raisuk. That's an excellent presentation. I remind people to put your questions on the Q&A panel for us. And it's great to see all this wonderful message coming from around the world. Our next speaker really needs no introduction. Professor Freddie Fu is known around the world. He is the professor and chairman of the Department of Orthopedics and the head team physician at the University of Pittsburgh. He's also a past president of ISACOS and he's going to share with us his extensive knowledge Good morning, this is Freddy Fu. I'm going to share with my uh, experience with you and all the uh, mistakes I've made in the last 40 years. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. This is my disclosure. And uh, what is a cell? It's dynamic, it's biological. There are bundles that work with bone morphology, and there's variation as well as aging. So if you remember those six principles of what a cell is, again, we can progress. Uh, on the success of ACL surgery in the next 20, 30 years. This is very important definition right here. So the ACL is complicated. As you can see, this is a micro CT from Stefano Savanini from top to bottom. is a complex insertion site from the top. And you can see a septum dividing the ACL into two bundles right there. <clears throat> you can see it right there. And then the TPL insertion site also is complicated into AM and PL bundle. Now, what you see on your left side is a static dissection with me and Paul Galano. It's beautiful, but this is not an ACL look like. The ACL is dynamic. It's like a heart pumping. It's like Henry Mankin say how the cartilage, you know, gets squeezed in and come out. In fact, in our study, in our laboratory, we showed there's no isometric. The ACL actually changed length almost 20 to 30%. It's squeezing and it comes out. Of course, we know it failed at 8%. This is the ultimate feeling low, but the squeezing together is important too, because it's allowed the blood supply uh, to come in to revascularize the ACL. This is the vascularity of the ACL. You can see there's a membrane, there's septum, and there's bundle. And within the bundles, there's vascularity, there's stem cells we discovered with Dr. Hewitt years ago, and both in adults and in fetus. It's very important. Dr. Erickson will talk about biological, but this is your lifeline to your ACL every day. Even in 82, Anoski showed the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus to be a key blood supply um, to the ACL, as you can see uh, right here. So this is important to preserve the insertion site, especially near the meniscus. You can see this is a feature study on the left side. You can see the vascularity coming in. 17 years old, the same vascularity, but if you get old, like myself, I'm 69 the vascularity go away and you get the degenerative changes. And uh, so it, it, it change throughout time. Again, you can see a fetus. The first fetus we did almost 20 years ago was two bundles, 30 years, two bundles. And you can see on this old ballerina, there are two bundles. So look at nature, don't create nature. This is what Paul Galano said. Again, you have a look at bone morphology. Now we have to look at it three dimensional. Uh, you talk about tibial stop autosome, which are two-dimensional, which is okay. But in, in, for real life, everything is 3D. <laughs> so you can see human on the right, uh, left side, and the gorilla on the left, there are three bundles on gorilla. Why? Because some human have three bundles too, because the bone morphology are so different. The gorilla need three bundles to allow the rotation to occur. So look, is that much more rotation? And even with the human being, the rotation difference is 9 degrees from 9 to 27 degrees. The morphology of the bone is more important than the ligament, ladies and gentlemen. I know that we like to alter on the ligament. That we have to understand what is it, you know, that caused the bone to move. The ligament is just there to guide it. Again, if you look at the bone, bone morphology, like a total knee replacement, every A cell is different. In fact, I can challenge all of you, there's no two A cells the same. It's like your fingerprint. You want to make it one size fit all, so it's easy for surgery. But this is not a life it is. You can look at very two-dimensional. You can look at the sagittal uh, MRI. You can measure the uh, size. You can measure the length, inclination, angle. And also, you can do three-dimensional. This is all published. Uh, in three-dimensional, you can see the size. So we essentially, in CRISPR, we look at the size, the length, to pick the graph and also to pick whether it's a single 
or double bundle too. And we also do intraop measurement. So we do pre-op, intraop, and the graph, we pick depending on all this measurement. Many times we do not take the graph until we do this all this measurement. Again, if you cut this thumb now, you can say you can repair this in the future, maybe you can. But if you look at cutting in the young person thing, this is the stump of the tibial side. This is not what the dissection show. The dissection says that it's a C-shaped structure in older specimen. A young specimen like this is an oval shape. You can see AM and PL is not a C-shaped structure that people have talked about. You can see variation in young people. I have done more than two thousands of cases measurement now, and there's so much variation. It's incredible. If you want to do one size fit all, it's impossible. Same on the femoral side, it's not exactly the same under the ridge. Some are bigger, some are smaller, some occupy, you know, half the wall, like you can see in the middle upper part. And look at that, the lower part is a evulsion, direct evulsion in the middle. So beautiful, you know, oval shape of the insertion side. And also the notch size is important. On the left side, you can see a small notch with a BTP that fail because this notch cannot really um, hold this uh, graph. On the right side, you can see big notch. You can put the ACL in the wrong place and patient will do okay for a while with the wrong kinematic probably. Again, the goal for us is to measure the size of the insertion site, the length and the thickness, and then restore about 50 to 80%. Why 50? Because if you're under 50, it's probably too weak. If it's more than 80, maybe it's too big and you're gonna lose motion. So somewhere in that range. Ideally, you, you like to do it before 70 to, 70 to 80%. This is what our goal in Pittsburgh is. You can do all this measurement, also pre-op on the graph size, quad tendon, patella tendon, the length. You can also see the ultrasound. We do ultrasound on every knee. Every knee, we do operate on the ultrasound on all this perimeter. And with that, we can size exactly. So you can see on your left side, we put in a six millimeter graph for a very small insertion site. And this patient restored hyperlaxity. And in the middle, you can see we use a double bundle for a very big insertion site and only restored 55% of the tibia <laughs> compared to a six, 78%. So I, again, I'm, unless you have all this parameter, it's hard to compare your result. I hate to tell you, people compare, oh, extraticular, uh, no extraticular. Unless you have these numbers, you cannot really tell why are you not successful in your ACL surgery. In other words, I think you should do the best ACL surgery first, and then you can add on anything you want to add. I don't care, okay? But you have to do the best ACL first, according to anatomy. And if that, with that, then you can do anything you want. Again, aging is important. Why? Because we look at all the dissection, and uh, all the report from very good people, but you can see this MI from 20 years old to 80 years old, change drastically, okay? Some of you would, almost 30 years ago, say that the, the, the strength changed tremendously from 100% to 20%. The fetus on your left side, 30 years old, and you can see 80 years old. So if you dissect this 80 years old knee, you're gonna find a lot of degenerative changes and you can cut out half the fatty changes and you become a flat, or ribbon ACL, but a real ACL is not like that. And any, any graph you put in also, they will reform the double bundle with time too. It's a biological phenomenon. You can see all of this uh, nice study to show the shape, direct fiber, and all the things that it's all aging, all old specimen. We operate on young people. Look, look at my NH studies, 21 years old. So there's a very different anatomy we are talking about. Now, I hate to tell you, we want to do this, I was weak anatomic study, small numbers, eight specimen. I would call it a fragile anatomical study to be critical. Why? Because we want to do a one size fit all surgery. This is easy for you to do. But look, you have to do better for the patient. You cannot do a one size fit all surgery. It may fit 70, 80%, but it's not all of the ACL. So again, be a 100% ACL surgeon. One size should all get you in the middle of the range and you can get failure, you know, on both sides. And I'm going to tell you, I have done more than 1,000 revision and referral from all over the world. And almost in 90%, I can find an anatomical reason why it fails because of the size of the notch, because of the size of the graph and, uh, you know, all those things. So you can look at all those things I talked to you about and you can find why it failed. Not because you need an extra tickle, you need all those things. If you correct it, your results can be very, very good.
Again, this is a concept. Double bundle start is a technique. Become a concept, individualized anatomical. You can do single bundle, double bundle, one bundle augmentation, random preservation, repair, and non-operation. And with that, it's very interesting. Every time I operate, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna, every, every case to me is a new case, interesting cases. And you're gonna make your life exciting again. Again, you can, this is a single bundle, small insertion site, 12.6 millimeters, 8.5 graph. And this is another single bundle with a big insertion site. And we're gonna restore 75 to 65% on the CAT scan uh, in this particular cases. Now, this is a picture of a hamstring graft single bundle two years post swap. You can see it reformed the two bundles. You can see the vascularity right in the septum right there. Because anything you put in anatomically and allow it to heal, by the way, more than six months, eight months, nine months, one year. If you allow that to happen, then nature will restore everything. I don't care what you put in, okay? You put in flat graft, round graft, it's gonna all change back to your A cell that you like. Now we've done many studies over the last 15 years. These are three major, level one, level two, level one study. And uh, AGSM all, and one of them won the best AGSM paper. Uh, and uh, these are all young people, all like playing young people. And the bottom line is the prospective rhodomite study. More than 450 patients over the 15 years and less than 5% graph failure and very good result. And the last study actually has kinematics data too. So, um, so why I, I say that anatomical individualized? Anatomical is variation. So you have to individualize. So if you want to do one size fit all anatomical, it just doesn't work. You have to look at everything. And why is it value based? If you use the principle, all you need to do is to measure the graph size, insertion size. It doesn't cost you any money. That's in terms of any time, okay? So this is why value based. If you do that, your result can be, like I told you, you know, quite good. And then all this literature, right, talking about that, oh, you're gonna have high failure rate, you're gonna get to 5%. I'm gonna tell you, we're there already. And you look at some of the Japanese study, other study, with a good, you know, uh, approach and a similar approach and also longer term rehab, you're already there. You don't need to do all this other, you know, things. Gain, look at nature, don't create nature. Respect and preserve. So in the end, remember, A cell is dynamic, it's biological. There are bundles that work with bone morphology, maybe more important than the ligament it itself. And because it's human being, it's variations, and as well as aging, because aging, because we have understand a 45 years old age cell is different than a 15 years old age cell in the dissection. And we have always learned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Fu. It's always uh, enlightening and learned a lot from you. Um, well, and thank you very much for uh, getting up so early, right? You know, like 5, 6 a.m. in Pittsburgh, right? <laughs> so um, the next speaker is uh, Professor Chen Shiyi from uh, Shanghai Fudan 